friends, welcome to the world of company law. I, Professor Kunal Shah, is over here on behalf of JK Shah classes to present you all the revisionary part of a chapter that is registration of charges. Yes, my dear friends, this entire topic is given under chapter number 6 of Companies Act 2013, wherein we need to cover section number 77 up to section number 87. In this entire chapter, two provisions are been omitted. One is section number 81 and another being section number 85. So let us begin our journey for registration of charges. Yes, I know that you guys know what do you mean by charge. The word charge is been defined under section number 2 clause 16. Whenever a company is going to obtain a term loan or a working capital loan either from a financial institution or from a bank then in that case the company will be offering its property or a set as a security to the lender. See the company is going to borrow the money so company will be considered as a borrower. The financial institution or the bank who is lending the money to the company will be considered as a lender. In order to secure such loan, in order to secure such loan, the borrower that is the company will be creating a charge upon its property, will be creating a charge upon its property or assets in the favor of the lender. Such security can either be by the way of a mortgage or it can be by the way of a hypothecation or it can even be by way of a pledge. So whether you go for a mortgage or whether you go for a hypothecation or whether you go for a pledge, it's one and the same that is the company has created a charge upon its asset. So why does the company create a charge? The company creates a charge just to secure, just to secure the repayment of the debt taken by the company. Whatever is the amount the company has taken as a loan, just to secure that loan, the company creates a charge upon its asset. Lawmaker says that whenever a company creates a charge, whenever a company creates a charge, then such charge should be registered with the ROC. Yes, my dear friends, charge created must be registered with the ROC. Irrespective whether the charge is created in India or charge is created upon an asset situated outside India. Charge is created, the charge should be registered with the ROC. Over here my dear friends, we have got two kinds of charge. One is a fixed charge which is also called as a specific charge. Another being a floating charge. Whenever a company is going to create a charge upon an asset which is specific in nature, it is ascertained in nature, it is definite in nature, then such charge created upon an asset which is fixed, specific and definite in nature, then such charge is called as a fixed charge. Over here, we can take an example of a company providing its land and building or plant and machinery as a security. A fixed charge is against a security of certain specific property. Yes, once such charge has been created, then the company loses the right to dispose of that particular property. So if the company has created a charge upon land and building, then sorry to say, the company is not allowed to dispose of that land and building. However, if the charge is being created upon an asset which is of a fluctuating type, charge is created upon an asset 
which is of a fluctuating type then such charge is called as a floating charge for example the company has created a charge upon an asset called as stock in trade or upon an asset called as debtors over here whenever a company creates a floating charge then in that case the floating charge should get crystallized into fixed charge then only such charge then only such asset can be sold off and the money can be paid off to the creditors the process of conversion of a floating charge into fixed charge i repeat the process of conversion of a floating charge into fixed charge is called as crystallization of floating charge over here crystallization of floating charge will come into picture only when the company is going for a liquidation or the business of the company gets seized or terms and conditions with the creditors are not been followed so over here the company will be crystallizing its floating charge and getting it converted into a fixed charge for example there is a company over here called as reliance industries limited this company has created a charge upon its asset called as raw materials kept at the go down raw materials kept at the go down so this charge which has been created is of a floating nature because the raw materials keeps on changing on day to day basis now reliance has made a promise to the creditors that under any given point of time the raw materials kept inside the go down will be of minimum 15 crore will be of minimum 15 crore the value of the creditors the value of the creditors is of 12 crores now one fine day the creditors demanded a stock audit and by conducting a stock audit it came into the picture that the company was maintaining on an average a stock of raw material which was of only 13 crores the company had made a promise to the creditors that any given point of time the raw materials inside the godown will be of at least 15 crores see the terms and conditions are not been followed then what the creditors can do over here they can close down the godown and ask the company not to use the raw materials kept inside the godown so over here something which was floating in nature has become fixed in nature something which was floating in nature has become fixed in nature and that process is called as crystallization of a floating charge let us begin our journey towards the very first provision of this chapter that is section number 77 of companies act 2013 section number 77 of companies act 2013 says about filing of particulars of creation of charge see whenever a charge is being created upon an asset i repeat whenever the charge is being created upon an asset then the details of such charge should be filed by the company to the roc irrespective irrespective whether the asset is situated in india or whether the asset is situated outside india if the charge is been created if the charge is been created then it shall be the duty of the company to get it registered with the roc it shall be the duty of the company to get it registered with the roc see over here the company is the borrower and the banker is the lender so any kind of a contract between the borrower or the lender over here will be referred as will be referred as an instrument with the help of that contract with the help of that instrument the charge came into picture so lawmaker says over here lawmaker says over here that the company shall get the charge registered with the roc by filing a form called as chg1 or a form called as chg9 form number chg9 comes into picture 
only when the charge is getting registered for debenture holders. However, if it is other than debenture holders, then the particulars of such charge should be registered under a form called as CHG1. So, for filing the particulars of the charge created, the company will have to either file a form called as CHG1 or the company will have to file a form called as CHG9. Along with this application form, the company will also require to file something called as the copy of the instrument. That copy of instrument should be signed by the borrower company along with the charge holder that is the lender. Such details should be filed with the ROC within 30 days of creation of charge. The day when the charge was created from that day within 30 days the particulars should be filed with the ROC. Yes, the company is required to pay some kind of fees for getting the charge registered. What is the fee? That's not in our portion. We have to just write it down. The company requires to pay some prescribed fees to the ROC for getting the charge registered. Over here, in order to get the charge registered, there is something called as, there is something called as a provision which the company needs to follow. Lawmaker says, lawmaker says that the charge should get registered within, the charge should get registered within 30 days of creation of charge. The day when the charge got created, from that day within 30 days, the charge should get registered with ROC. But now, there are two different scenarios which we need to understand. The lawmaker over here have divided the scenarios into two different parts. The very first part is a charge getting created before 2nd November 2018. And the second scenario over here is about a charge which is getting created on or after 2nd November 2018. If the charge is being created before 2nd November 2018, then yes, there is a different scenario, there is a different timelines which the company has to follow. But if the charge was being created on or after 2nd November 2018, then yes, there is a different timeline the company needs to follow in order to get an extension. For example, the company created a charge on 1st of January 2018. So this is what? This is the date when the charge got created. And yes, this date is before 2nd November 2018. Over here, the lawmaker says that such charge should get registered within 30 days of its creation. The charge should get registered within 30 days of its creation. So if the charge was being created on 1st of January 2018, then from that day, within 30 days, the charge should get registered. For which the company requires to fill something called as the normal fees. The company requires to pay is something called as the nominal, that is the normal fees. So this is the original time period, this is the original time period within which the charge should get registered. If the charge is not getting registered within 30 days, then the lawmaker says that the company can still get the charge registered within 300 days. The company can still get the charge registered within 300 days from the day when the charge was being created. So what's the first option? The first option is to get the charge registered within 30 days of its creation by paying a normal fees to the ROC. If the charge was not getting registered within the original period, then the company can still get the charge registered 
within 300 days of its creation. And over here, the company is required to pay something called as additional fees. The company is required to pay something called as additional fees. So, if the company gets the charge registered within the original period, then in that case, the company is bound to pay normal fees only. But if the company gets the charge registered within an extended period of time, within an extended period of time, then in that case, the company requires to pay some additional fee. If you just calculate, then the extension is of purely 270 days. Sir, what if within 300 days also the charge did not get registered with the ROC? The lawmaker says now the company will be eligible to get a second extension which says that now under any circumstances the charge should get registered within 6 months from 2nd November 2018. This is the second extension given to the company. This is the second extension given to the company. If I just concise this thing, it purely tries to convey that under any circumstances, charge created should be registered. Either under the original period of 30 days, if not, then by getting an extension of 300 days, that is maximum within 300 days from the creation of charge, it should get registered. If still it is not getting registered, then the company shall make the provision to get the charge registered within 6 months from 2nd November 2018. Over here, different different fees will be charged for different different classes of companies different different fees will be charged for different different classes of companies okay what if the charge was been created on or after 2nd november 2018 for example a charge was being created on 1st january 2019 which means a charge got created on or after 2nd November 2018. Lawmaker says the original period remains the same that is the charge should get registered that is the charge should get registered within 30 days of its creation. The original period remains the same. Yes, over here the company is bound to pay something called as normal fees. But now, if the charge is not getting registered within 30 days of its creation, then the lawmaker says that the company can be given an extension of another 30 days by paying additional fees, which means the company should get the charge registered within 60 days from the date of creation of the charge. See, the original period is of 30 days. If within that time limit, if the charge is not getting registered, then the company is been allowed with an extension of 30 days, which means maximum within 60 days, which means maximum within 60 days from the creation of the charge, the charge should get registered. Okay. If the company is going to utilize the original period and getting the charge registered, then in that case, the company has to just pay something called as a normal fees. But if the company is going to utilize an extension and going to get the charge registered within that extended period, then in that case, the company requires to pay an additional fees. Sir, what if even in this first extension period, the company was not in a position to get the charge registered? Then in that case, the lawmaker says that even if in this 60 days from the creation of the charge, if the charge is not getting registered, then in that case, the company will be given a further extension of 60 days. 
the company will be given an further extension of 60 days. Now, if you just calculate then from the day when the charge was being created, from that day maximum within 120 days the charge should get registered. If the company is going to utilize the second extension, then in that case, the company is bound to pay something called as ad valorem fees. That is a fees which will be paid according to the value. It is a fees which has been generally charged based upon percentage. It is a fees which has been generally charged based upon percentage. So, if whenever the company wants to get the extension, then what is the procedure for getting the extension of time limit? Lawmaker says that in order to get the extension of time limit, the company needs to apply to the ROC by filing a form called as CAG1 or CAG9. Along with the application form, a declaration will be given either by the company secretary or by the director of the company wherein they will be declaring that the rights of the charge holder won't get affected the rights of the charge holder won't get affected charge holder means the rights of the creditors won't get affected yes the company will also require to pay something called as the additional fee or the ad valorem fee as applicable so when these three conditions are being fulfilled then the application will be reaching to the ROC and only when ROC gets satisfied only when ROC gets satisfied that the company had a sufficient reason for not getting the charge registered within the original period of 30 days and yes the rights of the charge holder are not going to get affected the rights are going to remain same then only then only roc will grant extension of time limit to the company for getting the charge registered over here there is just a summary over here which says that the charge which has been created on or after a charge which has been created on or after 2nd November 2018. The charge which has been created on or after 2nd November 2018, such charge should be registered within 30 days of its creation. If not, a further extension of 30 days can be given, which means maximum within 60 days which means maximum within 60 days from the creation of charge it should get registered if it is still not getting registered by using the first extension then a further extension of 60 days can be given which means under any circumstances within 120 days from the creation of charge the charge should get registered with the ROC once we make an application to the ROC for getting the charge registered, the ROC will check our application. If everything deems fit, ROC will issue a certificate of registration of charge. Such certificate will be issued by ROC under a form called as CHG2. And yes, that certificate itself is a conclusive evidence that the company has fulfilled the provisions of chapter number 6 of this act that is registration of charge of companies act 2013 so yes my dear friends the company made an application for getting the charge registered and yes roc has registered the charge and issued a certificate under a form called as CHG2 and that certificate itself is a conclusive evidence that the charge is been registered. So yes my dear friends we have successfully completed the understanding and the revisionary part of section number 77 
of Companies Act 2013. The next provision that is section number 78 which tells about application for registration of charge can also be given by the charge holder. Yes, generally the application for getting the charge register is been given by the company. But yes, if the charge holder wants to get the charge register, the charge holder can itself apply to the ROC within the same time, within the same manner by paying the prescribed fees and get the charge registered. See, the person in whose favor the charge is created may apply to the ROC for getting the charge registered along with the instrument of charge within the prescribed time, prescribed form and prescribed manner. So the charge holder has given an application to the ROC for getting the charge registered. Once the ROC receives the application, ROC will take this application and give a notice to the company. ROC will ask the company whether the charge should be registered or not. If the company does not communicate any objection within 14 days, then ROC starts believing that the company has no objection and ROC will get the charge registered as per the application made by the charge holder. Over here, yes, the charge holder is required to pay certain prescribed fees to the ROC for getting the charge registered. However, however, if the company is itself going to register the charge or if the company shows a sufficient reason why the charge should not be registered, then in that case, ROC shall not allow the charge holder to get the charge registered. Whatever is the prescribed fees paid by the charge holder, that prescribed fees can be recovered from the company. The charge holder can get the prescribed fees recovered from the company itself. So over here, charge holder will apply to the ROC. ROC will send a notice to the company whether the charge should be registered or not. If the company refuses, if the company showcases that they are themselves going to get the charge registered or they gives us a reason that why the charge should not be registered, then in that case, ROC will not register the charge as per the application made by the charge holder. Any kind of fees which the charge holder has paid to the ROC, that fees the charge holder can recover from the company. Sir, what if the charge is not been registered? What if the charge is not been registered? So what are the consequences for non-registration of charge? The lawmaker over here says that if the charge has been created but it is not registered, then whatever is the security given by the company to the charge holder, that security becomes void. Which means that in future, if the charge gets registered, in future, if the charge gets registered, then in that case, the security will be considered to be valid. However, if the company goes for a liquidation, then the creditor who was assuming himself to be secured in nature, but because of such unregistered charge, he will be assumed to be an unsecured creditor. Yes, the security has become void. The security has become void. But the contract between the company and the charge holder is still valid, which means as per the contract, the company is bound to repay the money secured as per the contract. So the contract will remain the valid. Only the security given by the company to the charge holder will be turning out to be void, will be turning out to be void. So yes, my dear friends, we have successfully completed the revisionary part of section number 77 along with section number 78 of Companies Act 2013.
so let us begin the understanding part for the next provision that is section number 79 of companies act 2013 section number 79 of companies act 2013 deals with modification of charge see once the charge has been registered with roc and later on if any kind of variations takes place in that charge then such variations such changes should also be communicated to the roc section number 79 covers two situation one is given under section number 79 subsection a and another is under section number 79 subsection b section number 79 subsection a talks about acquisition of any property already subject to charge by a company the company had created a charge upon an asset and now that asset has been acquired by some another company then such kind of changes should also be intimated to the roc or else there is any kind of changes in the terms and conditions towards the company and the charge holder in short any kind of modification including variation in any terms of conditions including change in rate of interest either by mutual agreement or by operation of law including variation in extent or operation of any charge is also to be considered as a modification few examples are being given towards modification if any kind of modification comes into picture then yes even that modification should get registered with the roc once the company registers the modification with the roc the roc issues a certificate of modification of charge roc issues a certificate for modification of charge this certificate is issued as per a form called as cxg3 yes this certificate issued by the roc will be considered to be a conclusive evidence that the company has fulfilled the provisions of chapter number 6 of companies act 2013 whatever were the provisions required for registration of a modification of a charge all those provisions are been successfully been completed so over here section number 79 deals with modification of a charge let us begin the next provision that is section number 80 which deals with deemed notice of charge the word notice is actually derived from a latin term noticia and it stands for to give knowledge it stands for to give knowledge over here the lawmaker try to says that whenever a charge is been registered with the roc and later on any person wants to acquire that property or wants to acquire that asset from the company then it is the duty of that particular person to first approach the roc get the information whether the asset which is going to purchase from the company is subject to charge or not if such steps are not been taken by that particular person the company is having a right to assume that the particular person who has approached the company for buying an asset is having a knowledge about the registration of the charge so whenever you want to buy out a property from the company it is the duty of yours that you should first approach the roc and get the details from the roc that the asset which you are going to purchase is been subject to charge or not for example there is a company over here who has created a charge upon plant and machinery the charge is been registered with the ROC. Now, there is an outsider called as Mr. Manan. There is an outsider over here called as Mr. Manan. Manan wanted to purchase this plant and machinery. So, Manan, your very first duty is to make an inquiry with the ROC that the said plant and machinery which you are going to purchase from the company is subject to charge or not. If such inquiries are not been made by Manan, 
and Manan directly approaches to the company for purchase of plant and machinery and later on Manan comes to know that the asset which he was going to purchase from the company is subject to charge and if Manan suffers a loss then sorry to say Manan you cannot recover that amount from the company you cannot demand the loss amount from the company over here the company has got a right to assume that Manan was having the notice of charge right from the day when the charge was being registered with the ROC. Section number 81 is been omitted. The next part is section number 82 which deals with satisfaction of charge. Section number 82 which deals with satisfaction of charge. Yes my dear friends a charge was being created for the creditors of the company in order to secure them. Now, when the company raised the funds from its creditors, the company wanted to secure those creditors for which the company created a charge and the company also got the charge registered with ROC. Now, the day when the company makes the full payment to its charge holder, the day when the company makes the full payment to its charge holder, the company can approach the registrar by filing a form called as CHG4. The company can approach the registrar by filing a form called as CHG4, wherein the company will intimate the registrar stating that for this all creditors the charge was being created and registered, but now the company has made a full payment to those charge holders. So now the company will require, the company will be interested to remove the charge to release the asset from charge. For that reason, the company will be approaching the ROC. For that reason, the company will be approaching the ROC by filing a form called as CHG4. Such form should be filed with ROC within 30 days from the date of such payments. The day when the payments were being made, from that day, within 30 days, the company should approach the ROC. But if it is a company called as a specified IFSC public company, then instead of 30 days, they have been given a time limit of 300 days. Okay, if you are a normal company and you are not in a position to get the charge satisfied within 30 days to 300 days, then in that case, the company can approach the ROC for getting something called as extension of time limit. See, the original time limit for a normal company is to get the charge satisfied within 30 days. But if within 30 days the charge is not been satisfied, then a normal company can still approach ROC within 300 days, which means an extension of 270 days is been given to a company. If the company uses, if the company uses such extended period, then in that case, the company needs to pay something called as an additional fees to the ROC. So over here, whenever the company has made a full payment to its charge holders, then the company will approach the ROC. The company will approach the ROC for satisfying the charge by filing a form called as CHG4. Such details should be filed with ROC within 30 days. In case of a specified IFSC public company, instead of 30 days, it is 300 days. However, if you are a normal company, you are not filing a details of satisfaction of charge within 30 days, then in that case, then in that case, the company can still approach ROC and file the details within a period of 300 days from the day when the payments were being made. If an extension is being used, then in that case, the company is liable to pay something called as an additional fees to the ROC. Now, the company has intimated the ROC. Now, ROC will give a notice to the charge holder wherein the charge holder should reply within 14 days whether they are having any kind of objection for satisfaction of charge or not. If a charge holder has got an objection, then the ROC will note the down. ROC will note down such objection and intimate the company that sorry to say company, we cannot satisfy the charge because the charge holder has raised an objection. But if within 14 days, the charge holders 
do not object do not object then in that case the roc will make an entry for memorandum of satisfaction of charge in its own register yes roc will also be maintaining its own register wherein in that register roc will just make an entry for memorandum of satisfaction of charge later on roc will issue a certificate of registration of satisfaction of charge to the company under a form called as chg5 see for the roc the proof is the register itself inside the register the moment roc mentions memorandum of satisfaction so that itself is a proof that the charge has been satisfied for the company the proof of evidence will be the certificate of registration of satisfaction this certificate the roc will issue to the company under a form called as chg5 it will be issued under a form called as chg5 okay now when the company had filed chg4 to the roc when the company had filed chg4 to the roc inside that chg4 the consent of the charge holders were already been taken the consent of the charge holders were already been taken then roc will not require to give a separate notice to the charge holder ROC will not require to give a separate notice to the charge holder. The next provision over here is section number 83 of Companies Act 2013. See under section number 82 what did we understand? Under section number 82 we understood that the company will intimate the ROC and then ROC will satisfy the charge. But now under section number 83 lawmaker says that ROC has got the power to make entries of satisfaction and release the charge even if the intimation is not been received from the company. Yes, section number 83 empowers the ROC to make entries with respect to satisfaction and release of charge even if no intimation was been received from the company. If the company fails to intimate the ROC for satisfaction of charge but ROC has got an evidence that the charge should get satisfied then even without waiting for company's intimation the ROC can get the charge satisfied. Over here if any one of the three situation gets proved if any one of the three given situations gets proved and ROC has got the knowledge that the charge should get satisfied then even if no intimation was been received from the company ROC has got the power to get the charge satisfied. Before satisfying the charge ROC will first of all inform the affected parties. Once the informations are been given to the affected parties later on ROC will issue a certificate of satisfaction of charge. This certificate of satisfaction of charge will be issued under a form called as CHG5. It will be issued under a form called as CHG5. The next provision is about section number 84. Section number 84 of Companies Act 2013 deals towards intimation of appointment of receiver or intimation of the appointment of manager to the company and the registrar. See if the charge holder, if the charge holder has appointed a manager for taking care of the asset which was been given by the company as a security or the charge holder has approached the court and by the order of court a receiver is been appointed. See what is the work of this receiver or what is the work of this manager? They will be always and always safeguarding the property which the company has given as a security to the charge holder. So whenever the charge holder appoints the manager, whenever the charge holder appoints a manager or the charge holder appoints a receiver, then the details of such manager or the details of such receiver should be forwarded to the company as well as to the registrar. Such things should be forwarded to the company and the registrar within 30 days. 
For example, there is a company who has created a charge upon an asset called as plant and machinery. The charge was been created for a bank called as SBI. So company is the borrower and SBI is the lender. Over here, over here, plant and machinery is under the possession of the company. If SBI wants to appoint a person who will be always and always taking care of this asset, then whosoever is the person getting appointed, his details should be forwarded to the company as well as to the ROC. The details should be forwarded within 30 days from the order of the court or from the day of making the appointment. See such person that is the manager can be appointed as per the terms and conditions of the instrument or else if such instrument was been silent then the caretaker can even be appointed with the order of the court. If the person has been appointed with the order of the court, then in that case the person is to be considered as a receiver. However, if the person is getting appointed as per the terms and conditions of the instrument, then that person is considered to be a manager. Once this manager or the receiver seizes their office, means they are going to vacate their office, then while leaving their office, they will have to again intimate to the ROC as well as to the company under a form called as CHG6. Under a form called as CHG6. Section number 85 has been omitted. So let us move on towards the second last provision of this chapter, that is section number 86. Yes, my dear friends, before this, section number 85 has been omitted from our syllabus. So now we are upon the second last provision, that is section number 86, which tells about the punishment for contravention of any of the provision of this chapter. After this, we are left out with one more provision, that is section number 87. Over here, in section number 86, there was the penalty which is now been omitted and we have got a new penalty. We have got a new penalty. The lawmaker over here says that if any of the provisions is been contravened either towards the registration of charge or towards the modification of charge or towards the satisfaction of charge. Then in that case, the company will be asked to pay a penalty of rupees 5 lakhs and every officer of the company who is in default will be asked to pay a penalty of rupees 50,000. So there was a change in the penalty part under section number 86, which is also been now covered in our revisionary lecture. The last provision is about section number 87, that is about rectification by central government of the register of charges. See in this entire chapter, if for example, the company failed to get the charge satisfied within the prescribed time limit, or else the company has submitted some kind of statements which are misstatements or there was omissions for filing certain details. Then the company can approach the central government by filing a form called as CHG8. The company can approach the central government by filing a form called as CHG8 and ask the central government for rectification of register of charge. Only when central government is satisfied, only when central government is satisfied that the omission was accidental or it was inadvertent, the company did not have any kind of intention to harm the position of the shareholders or the creditors. And it will be justified and it will be an equitable ground to grant relief to the company, then only central government will issue an order for rectification, wherein the company could be given an extension for filing satisfaction of charge even beyond 300 days. Or else the central government can ask the company to go for rectification of register of charge any kind of omissions done or any kind of misstatements done could be rectified, could be rectified. So yes, my dear friends over here, we have successfully completed our entire revisionary part for chapter number six, that is registration of charges. Thank you so much.